Hey guys, my name is Elena and I'm an expat living and working in Odessa, Ukraine for the last three years. A couple of days ago there were new rules of traveling to Ukraine introduced related to COVID, so that's what I wanted to tell you in this video. As of 21st of October, uh, these new rules have been published on the website of Ministry of Health of Ukraine. So this guys is the official data. If you're watching this video, this is the official data. You really need to look no further for information. I divided the video into four parts. First of all, what you need to do if you are unvaccinated, you want to come to Ukraine. The second one is for vaccinated people. Finally, what is the general epidemiologic situation in Ukraine? Does it make sense to come right now? And uh, the last part, if you're landing in one of those red zones in Ukraine, what does it mean for you? Because obviously you didn't come here to uh, read books in your hotel room, you want to go to restaurants, you want to go to bars. First, the people who have not been vaccinated against COVID or people who have only one dose of vaccinations if the full vaccination cycle is two doses. In this case, you have to have three things ready. First of all is the travel health insurance. Uh, this is useful in any case, but during COVID times, it has to cover your entire stay in Ukraine, whether that's a week, a month, two months, and it has to include COVID care. So in case you get sick, uh, the insurance has to uh, state that they will treat you uh, on their own expenses. So this is super important. The second document is a test that confirms that you do not have COVID. Um, luckily, this can be any kind of test. It could be an antigen test, an express test, a PCR test, whatever you like. But the test has to be done uh, at most 72 hours in advance. And finally, the last thing, which is a bit different from the last time, is that you have to have installed on your phone the application of DOMA. This is an application, Ukrainian application, that is available for um, you know, Android phones and uh, iPhones. And basically in this application, you have to install it first, but when you pass the border, you have to uh, fill a couple of pieces of information about yourself. This is your name, your surname, um, your passport number, your phone number, and the place where you will be residing. This has to be an exact concrete place like a hotel address or your Airbnb address or anything like that. If for some reason you do not want to share that information, you do not want to download the app, you cannot enter Ukraine. So it's as strict as that. You have 72 hours basically to pass a second test. Yes, a second test that you have to pass in Ukraine. So um, it's only possible in the centers that are approved by the Ministry of Health of Ukraine. And if you are landing in one of the Ukrainian airports, the big ones, uh, Borispol or Giuliani, uh, they actually have a place where you can get tested right away. So basically without even leaving the airport, you do the test and then you wait usually for six, seven, eight hours, you go to your place and you get your result. In case uh, when the result is negative, meaning you do not have COVID, consider yourself lucky. From this point on, you don't have to do anything else. Like you're set, you can delete the app and enjoy Ukraine. However, if your result has been positive, that is, you have COVID, then you need to call the number in your insurance and they will give you further instructions on how to act. Um, I don't truly really know what will happen at this point, but I think it's pretty realistic that you'll be forced to stay for 14 days in isolation at the place um, where you registered in Doma, whether that's your hotel or Airbnb or maybe a friend's house or something like that. Uh, unfortunately for citizens coming from uh, India and from Russia, there was a rule that stated that they have to be in isolation regardless of the results of the test if they are not vaccinated. So this rule hasn't really changed, which means if you're flying from Russia or India, be ready to stay in quarantine and isolation for 14 days. Oh, and one more thing, if for some reason you do not manage to get the uh, second COVID test in Ukraine in the 72 hours window, uh, then the app gets deactivated and law enforcement is informed about you with your passport number and your location. How they're going to proceed further, I'm not really sure, but 
again, my assumption is they will force you to stay in isolation and quarantine for the period. If you are vaccinated, things are easy breezy for you. You only need two documents. The first one is the uh, travel insurance that covers your entire stay in Ukraine and that covers COVID expenses in case you do get sick. Don't forget that although uh, the vaccine has many advantages, it does not guarantee 100% you will not get COVID. So you still have to take care of yourself. But first, let's admire this beautiful view. It's sunset time in Odessa. So this is the first document, uh, the travel health insurance. And the second document is um, your COVID certificate. Your COVID certificate can be either in paper form or it could be uh, printed out. Both of these variants are fine, but it has to be in English to be legible by the uh, border police. And it has to attest that you actually have down two doses of the vaccine because most vaccines do need two doses except Johnson & Johnson, if I'm not mistaken. And it has to be a vaccine that is officially recognized by the World Health Organization. If you're vaccinated with one of the vaccines that is not recognized, unfortunately, you will have to follow the rules of the people who are not vaccinated. I'm really sorry about that, but that's a reality. So watch uh, the first part of the video for the unvaccinated people. And basically you're done, you know. Now to answer the question of whether you would want to come to Ukraine at this time. And unfortunately, the situation has been you know, becoming worse and worse. I'm really sad to say it, but it's true. Uh, we in Ukraine have seen the highest number of people who are infected with coronavirus. Uh, as of 24th of October, uh, the number was almost 22,000 people who had coronavirus, new cases. This is the highest number ever seen in Ukraine. And combine that with the lowest vaccination rate in the whole Europe. So Ukraine has the lowest vaccination rate in the whole Europe. That's only 15%. Ukraine being a huge country, you know, um, it doesn't seem like anything good is coming our way um, during the winter, unfortunately. Um, this information is not to dissuade you from visiting Ukraine, but I guess just like to consider it and take the proper precautions. For the moment, already six regions in Ukraine are in the red zone, and those are Dnipropetrovsk, Donetsk, Zaporizhia, Odessa, Sumy and Kherson. All the other regions are mostly in the orange zone, there are a couple in the yellow zone and there are no regions in the green zone. As I'm reporting from Odessa, which is in the red zone, I have to say that uh, red zone this time is a bit different from the red zones before. Previously, if a city or region was in the red zone, it meant that all the entertainment establishment like bars, restaurants, cafes, theaters, clubs, gyms, uh, malls, everything will be closed. This time around, they allow these places to stay open only and if only 100% of their staff is vaccinated and all the people who come inside their establishment are also vaccinated which means that if you are vaccinated you can go to all of those places up and showing your vaccination certificate if the place is still open which means that they have all their workers all their employees vaccinated however if you're not vaccinated then unfortunately you will not be able to go to those places which means you pretty much will be stranded in your hotel room obviously you can go to the sea you can take walks and odessa being odessa we don't really follow the rules closely unfortunately so there will be restaurants who will not be very strict about enforcing those rules thus allowing you to come inside and you know have some food have some water have some wine whatever without checking your certificate uh, but this is not something that I recommend again because of the high numbers so guys if you found this video interesting and informative please like and subscribe believe me subscription is the best thing that you could do for my small channel because it's growing slowly it's thriving and your support is everything and feel free to share this video to those of your friends who are planning to come to ukraine i think being informed is so important in this day and time and i hope you take care of yourself have a good day bye bye